So you clicked on this video to learn the correct way to set up your project for color grading in DaVinci Resolve and that's exactly what we're going to speak about today. If you don't know me, I'm Graham Hunt and I'm a colorist based in Cape Town, South Africa and I've been privileged to work on commercials and films and I'm absolutely passionate about what I do. So I'm going to show you how I like to set up my projects for color grading and I'm going to walk you through the software as well. And after watching this video, you're going to have a much better understanding of how to work in DaVinci Resolve and the best way to set your project up so that you can have a better experience color grading, but also be able to get better results. So what are the specifics that we're going to be learning within this video? How to create a timeline that is optimized for color grading, the basics of color management, what it is and why it's important, how to navigate the color page and get familiar with these tools, which is really helpful when you need to move quickly, and how to set up render caching to speed up your workflows, which is really helpful, especially if, if you have a slower computer or maybe just a really big project on your hand. And all of these things are really important because how you set up your project in Resolve will really impact your workflow and the accuracy of your grading results. It's pretty much the foundations of the color grading mansion that we are building. So let's get into DaVinci Resolve and we can take it a little bit further. So to begin, we are gonna start by setting up our project with our project settings. Remember that we are trying to optimize this for color grading specifically. So if you're an editor, you know that you need to make sure that your resolution is right or that your frame rate is right. But when it comes to color grading, there are certain parameters that we wanna make sure that we are either enabling or that we are in control of so that we can get the best results. So to do that, we are going to go straight into our project settings over here. In the bottom right hand corner, there's this cog. When I click that, project settings is going to open. So in our master settings, that's where we can find our timeline resolution, timeline frame rates. We actually want to go down to color management. And so we actually have to speak about color management and uh, optimizing our timeline at the same time because they both go hand in hand. So how we optimize our timeline is by enabling color management or by taking control of the color management that's happening within our project. But what is color management? This is something that's really important for us to understand if we are to be able to kind of get rid of the guessing game when it comes to color grading. If you have an image that is in a log format, which is this right here, this is Apple log footage. And if you don't know what log is, it's a format for filming that allows you to be able to have the most information captured within an image, which is really, really great and really helpful, especially as a colorist. So how do we get this to be an image that actually looks more contrast? So if I go into the color page, I'm just going to show you right now. I'm in my curves. I'm just going to add some contrast into the image. This is what we're most likely more used to seeing um, on, on an image on the TV or something like that, right? This is what we're more used to seeing. However, that is just a guessing game. I think that's how much contrast I should put into this image to make it seem right, but I could be wrong. And, and so it's not a good place to start off color grading. So if our whole project is log footage, which often it is, we actually need to be able to control that and take away that guessing game by telling DaVinci Resolve what color space our footage is and what color space we need it to be at the end. The other cool thing that we can do is tell DaVinci Resolve what color space we want to work in in the middle. So if we have our input color space and our output color space, we can tell DaVinci Resolve where we want to be working in terms of our timeline color space. So the footage comes in, we get to work on it, and then the footage goes out in a different color space. Why do we do this? So we'll get into that a little bit later, but essentially a color space is a spectrum of color that has been designated a numerical value. It's a super complex thing to explain and to understand, so we're not really gonna go into it because this is for beginners. But what you need to know is that each camera has its own color space, its own gamma, which is essentially the luminance values or the brightness. We need to be able to understand how to take that footage process that footage, color grade that footage, and then put it out at an industry standard color space. This is what we as colorists do. So that's why it's so important to understand what color management is, because color management is being able to manage all of these color spaces and be able to output them to the desired 
color space, which in most instances is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Something that you should remember and if you've been around, you will definitely have heard that quite a lot. So Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 is an industry standard that is pretty much used across the entire industry. If everyone was delivering their projects at a different output color space, things would be super messy. And if I were to watch it on my MacBook or on my TV, it would look different. There are other output color spaces, but for now, this is what we're going to focus on. So now that we have understood a little bit more about what color management is, how do we actually do it? Before we carry on, I'd like to share something really exciting with you. As creatives, we are always looking for the best music and sound effects for our projects. Audio is a licensing platform that offers high quality music and sound effects. It also has really cool AI features that makes your life so much easier, like their newly released Hunts AI, which makes finding the right music for your project super easy. You just have to describe what you're looking for and Hunts will suggest relevant songs that's on their daily growing library of tracks. So I'm going to type windy afternoon on a hillside in medieval Greece. And let's play back. It's really cool. They got such great music here. You can just hear the quality. As you can tell, there's a lot of high quality music and Hunt's AI just makes it so much easier to find the right music for your project. Using their Link Match AI feature, you can paste the link to a song that you like and it will find you similar songs to your reference. All the music and sound effects you find on audio is top quality. The sweetest part about all of this is that you can have access to a pro license for 70% off of your first year, meaning that you have access to music, sound effects, Hunt's AI, Link Match AI, and elements all for just $59 in your first year, which is absolutely a steal. Just use the coupon HUNT, H-U-N-T, in your checkout, or you can just click on the link in the description, check it out, try some of the features yourself. You are not gonna be able to get these kind of features in a different platform. So again, if we go to our project settings, color management, we can see that we have a couple options. So let's talk them through. In color science, we've got DaVinci YRGB, right? And if we click on that, we've got some more options here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is go to DaVinci YRGB color managed for now, just to explain something. Um, but before we do that, we can see we've got a timeline color space and an output color space, which is exactly what we are speaking about. So let's change this to color managed for now. If you are working with one camera, that makes your life really easy because DaVinci Resolve only needs to know about one input color space and it's always gonna be going out to one output color space anyway. But this is a great way to be able to just quickly set up your project and get a good conversion. So because automatic color management is set to on, when I click save, DaVinci Resolve is automatically going to figure out what color space the footage is in and do the conversion to Rec. 7 and 9. So I know this seems a little bit confusing. Why are we gonna be trying to make our footage look Rec. 7 and 9 right now when we're still only kind of grading it and working on it? Well, the reason for that is because we know we don't really want to be staring at a gray image all the time. It also means that we can put a good amount of contrast and a good amount of saturation into our image without sort of just guessing and hoping that that's going to be the right thing. So let me show you. As I click save here, you can see our image is completely different. There's so much more saturation, so much more contrast in here. And it definitely looks different from what I did earlier when I just added contrast to my own. This is now set to Rec. 709. However, the actual clip itself is still in a log format. So we still get to grade with all of that information that we had and we haven't confined it to this Rec. 709 image. I know that seems confusing, but I'll show you in a moment and it will make sense. So essentially now when we color grade, we can see this as a preview of what we are outputting, which is really, really helpful. So let's go back into our project settings here and I'm gonna turn automatic color management off. This is because I'm gonna be able to explain things a little bit more simple with a visual reference. So in our color processing mode, let's go all the way down to custom and that's gonna give us all of these options. So now we have access to manually change our input color space, timeline color space, as well as our output color space. You can leave the rest pretty much as is. So our input color space we know for this project is gonna be Apple Log. So I'm gonna click A and it's gonna bring up the A's for me and I'm gonna click Apple Log. 
our timeline color space we're gonna leave for now our output color space you guessed it rec 709 gamma 2.4 let's jump back to our timeline color space so as i said davinci davinci resolve knows that our footage is input color space at apple log it also knows that we want our output color space to be rec 709 which is what this playback is now giving us a preview of so before we actually get this preview of this playback we have what is called the timeline color space so that's the in between of the output and the input this timeline color space is what we're going to be working in now to give you a good representation of why we want to be working in a different color space to our output color space i'm going to jump into the color page and show you on a graph uh, the difference between these color spaces but first we're going to change our timeline color space to davinci wide gamut intermediate and that's because this is one of the biggest color spaces that exists so here we have well we've got three different things going on here but we're only going to focus on two which are the triangles essentially these are the boundaries of the rec 709 color space and as you can see it's uh, it's pretty small in comparison to the da vinci wide gamut intermediate which is this absolutely massive triangle and so this just gives us an example of what it's like when you try and work within rec 709 only it's quite a small color space and you limit your options and it's quite easy to push your color out of bounds and actually to break your color which means that you'll get these weird artifacts and things just won't look right so instead of working in a color space like that we want to work in da vinci wide gamut and this is what pros are doing this is not just something that um, everyone talks about because it's a fad this is how pros work this is how i work on every single project that I work in. So now we understand what color management is, why it's important and how we do it. We're gonna quickly jump into just familiarizing ourselves with the color page. So we're gonna start from left to right and work our way down. I'm not gonna go through everything because there is a ton to go through. I'm not gonna go through all the tools. I promise you that if you watch more of my videos, you'll become more familiarized with it, but also you just need to practice. So if you are not new to the color page, you might wanna skip this section, just go straight to the next section. But if you feel like you could need a refresher or if this is your first time, it can be really daunting. So let's jump into it. Cool, so on the left hand side up top, we've got gallery, which is a great place to save stills, which you can do just by right clicking on your playback window and clicking grab still. This is a great way to be able to uh, grab a reference image from another clip. So let's say I wanna be working uh, on this clip of the sunset. I can then play this still by selecting it and then clicking on image wipe. And as you can see, now we have that still coming back over our moving footage, which is really helpful in certain situations. We also have access to adding power grade albums, which means that anytime we grab a still, just like we did now, um, it's gonna save what is whatever is in these nodes. So if I make an adjustment to this node, I open up a new power grade uh, album like that, and I say grab still. Now when I reset my grades on these nodes when I play it or apply that grade it's actually going to apply that grade which is really helpful so good to know we then have our LUTs which is pretty much where all your stored LUTs are going to be you have media pool which is where all your clips are and then you have uh, this tab here which is called clips and essentially this is going to be showing you all of the clips on your timeline uh, in a thumbnail preview this is really helpful to be able to quickly move through your project and even be able to see what's coming next. I use this pretty much all the time. I never have it closed. It just makes my life a lot easier. So after that, we're going to come to this side of our page. We have our node graph over here, which is where we pretty much do all of our legwork, um, which is by default open. We have our effects tabs. I'm not going to go through quick export or timeline because I feel like these are just not worth going through um, this is pretty much where we're going to be working is within our nodes and on our effects so our fix has a bunch of different um, effects and things that we use like tools so not just effects not just transitions and those kind of things but tools that we can use like color space transform which we'll, which we'll get to just now there's also something called lightbox um, which essentially just allows you to be able to see all your clips in a tiled fashion but uh, but we're also not going to go through that right now so jumping over here we have our playback window 
which is pretty much where you're going to be seeing everything that you're working on, all the adjustments and uh, everything that you're doing. You can loop your playback um, and then right over here in the left hand corner, we have all of these options which are really great to know about. I'm going to show you why right now it's just worth going through. So obviously we've got all of our tools over here as well, which is where we can do some of the color grading. But for the example that I want to show you what that toolbar is so important for, if we come to our windows over here where we can make masks, I'm going to select our circle window and right here you can see we have these control points. So I can soften it, I can make it bigger, um, all of those kind of things. But for some reason at some point you might um, by default switch to a different tool like that just by clicking on a different window so if you go here by default it comes to um, it goes to this tool which is an eyedropper and uh, that means now we can't control our window anymore here we have access to be able to make sure that we have the tools available for the right applications so our power window if we click that again you can see those tools come back and that that's something that got me stuck so many times when I first began because I never knew about that. So anyway, now that we've gone through that, um, as I said, a bunch of color grading tools over here, palettes, things that are available for us to be able to use and uh, you will definitely become more familiar with them as you go. On our right hand side here, this is probably what you opened up on, which is our keyframes. This is really helpful for if you need to do something um, that you can't just track, you want to be able to manually um, control how much a node affects your image over a certain period of time. So for, for instance, if we wanted to keyframe uh, this node so that it starts at full opacity and then goes to zero opacity, you know, within five frames, we can do that, which is really helpful here in our keyframes. Uh, the next tab is our scopes, which is what we're going to go through in uh, probably the third video within the series. Really, really important and uh, really helpful. This is pretty much where we're able to measure our footage. All of this information that we're seeing here is our information in the image. And if I play that back, you'll see it move. And that's because this is a representation of the information in our image, but on a graph. So we've got a bunch of different options. If we click here, we have waveform, vector scope, histogram, and our chromaticity, which is really helpful. We can also full screen. There's a bunch of options here, but in a couple of videos from now, I'll show you exactly how I like to set them up for optimal usage. So don't worry about that. Just stay tuned for the next one. Cool, so now we have a basic understanding of the color page in DaVinci Resolve. It's really important to be able to know your tools so that you can move really quickly. So great, now you know how to set up your timeline, optimize for color grading, you know how to do color management, you are pretty much well on your way to color grading like a pro. But what if your computer is pretty slow? So in that case, what I like to do is set up render caching. And actually, I set up render caching on every single project that I work on, and so should you, so that it can pretty much render the images in the background, so that when I try and play something back, it plays back smoother. And also when I want to export, instead of pretty much processing, processing all of that imagery from scratch, what it's doing is it's just sort of leaning on the render cache that's already in the background to be able to render quickly. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is just come to playback up here. We can go to our render cache. We can either choose smart or user. Smart is essentially DaVinci Resolve is going to automatically render out the most intensive or power hungry clips that there are. Um, it's also really great because if you have a node that is doing more of the heavy lifting like noise reduction, it's going to render that, no that node and not the whole clip. So it just makes it a little bit easier for your computer to process. But I like to use user because it just means that it's going to render everything into the background um, and make my life a little bit easier. So clicking render, uh, I like to then go into my edit page. So I'm going to choose all of my clips right click and then select render cache color output. And essentially now I am telling DaVinci Resolve what to render and that it needs to render the color specifically as well. So heading over to our deliver page, I can show you how we get to use the, uh, I guess the benefits of this. If we scroll all the way down, come to our advanced settings, scroll all the way down again, and then select use render cached images. This is just another bonus tip for you. This is pretty much how every single pro works. There you have it guys. You now know how to set up a project like a pro, how to do color management like a pro, what it is and why we use it. And just stay tuned. The next couple videos are going to be really insightful. And I hope that you're going to glean a lot from this series. But yeah, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll see you in the next one.